What do storytelling and pitching have in common? What are investors expected to understand from your slide deck? How should you craft your oral presentation based on the context and the audience? And what are the most common mistakes? This video series shares important lessons learned from entrepreneurs and mentors that have successfully raised money from investors so that you can learn with their stories and kick ass in all your pitches. There are better pitches than others, of course, but the th first thing about a good pitch, it has to be honest. So uh, we can go through life watching five hours of the best pitches in YouTube, trying to perform like those pitches, but uh, it's, it's not true. We have to be faithful to our uh, features, our characteristics, and we have to um, be concentrated in conveying the message in a pragmatic way. So the strong points of our, of our idea, uh, why it's a business idea. Uh, most people, mostly engineers, know when they have um, great, these great ideas, really creatively, really innovative in terms of technology or a new service, they become so obsessed with the idea, they forget about the business side of the idea. So the best pitch um, gives uh, this the emotional dimension about the idea, of course, but it's mostly about turning that idea, that techno technology, that service, that product into a, a business um, idea. And that um, uh, is something that is done by uh, showing the opportunity for the investor, showing the dimension of the, the market, showing the others uh, why that idea responds to a need. This is how uh, any good pitch starts. This is general to all the people, uh, most em more emotional, more pragmatic, more rational. The best pitches start by stating uh, the need the, the idea is trying to solve. People uh, to go to Google to see the best pitches, uh, go to Shark Tank to see the, the best pictures. The, the first thing that I would like to say on that is that those pitches are prepared for hours, days. They take days of work. And they, they all sound really great, but they um, somehow show a persona that we have been creating for a few days to uh, get to that perfect uh, pitch. So I think it makes sense to watch uh, those, those videos, of course, but uh, th that's only step one. Step two is to prepare your own pitch. And as I was saying before, you can't escape yourself. You, you shouldn't try to be someone that you are not when you are pitching. You should look at those pitches, see what they have in common. And what do they have in common? They have in common the need they are, the, the idea is solving. They have in common uh, the people they are targeting. They have in common the investment costs uh, of, that, of that idea. They have in common some emotions uh, that we try to convey on the people that are watching us. So yes, we have to respond to a need. We have to explain there's a market for, th for that idea. We have to explain why our team is the best team uh, to perform that idea. That's all in common in all, those, in all those pitches. But then step two, three, four and five is to adapt those pitches to our um, own characteristics because most people try to copy, uh, to impersonate uh, someone else because it really works to see Steve Jobs uh, with his t-shirt, walking around, um, feeling confident in a, in a stage. But we are not all Steve Jobs. Some of us, uh, some of us are more shy, some of us are, us are more emotional than, than Steve Jobs. We shouldn't uh, try to convince people that we can do something else other than ourselves. So, yes. I think it's great because uh, to see those, to watch those videos, it's a way to get in the mood of the pitches, to see uh, 
all that it's common again about them. But then we have to leave those pitches behind and build our own pitches. Imagine that you are uh, speaking to, to a crowd, either, either it's a pitch or some public, public speaking, and you're speaking like this, looking at the ground, uh, um, uh, nervous about your hands, uh, talking really, really, really um, uh, uh, slowly or uh, in, a, in the low tone, tone of voice. People won't feel the confidence. So if you're not confident about your idea, if you're not able to look them in the eyes, to work with your hands, to have this really confident uh, tone, tone of voice, if you, that shows that you, you don't believe in your idea. So yes, of course, posture is important, of course, tone of voice is important, but again, be true to yourself. If you're really, really, really shy, um, you should work on some confidence and also, in the team, and I think we uh, will be talking about a little bit more about um, that uh, later in our in our uh, conversation. Uh, also, it's a team normally that's working on a pitch. You, a pitch, it's not something that um, is made to make all the elements of the group happy. And of course, we all worked a lot on this project, and we all have a say in that. In the pitch, forget about that. In the pitch, it's all about choosing the person that has the right skills for doing the performing the pitch. So if you have an, someone that is, that is extrovert in your, in your group, that has the best posture, the best tone, tone of voice, that it's more at ease speaking in public, that's the person you will want to, to pitch. But imagine that you have a pitch on education. You're uh, selling something to, uh, for parents to track their kids at, at school. Probably you won't, you won't want someone that's really uh, informal and uh, relaxed because parents will want that credibility argument. So in, in, um, the person that you choose and the posture and the tone that you use to speak about each product or service also depends on the nature of the pro product. If it's something more um, formal, uh, more technological, uh, more business oriented in terms of B2B, you will probably want uh, someone that will have a more formal po posture, a more formal tone, a more um, even tone. If you're pitching shoes, uh, if you're pitching shoes, you will want the, all the ladies to come on board, so you'll be excited because when women talk about shoes, they are excited. They don't want someone that, it's for, that is formal or that is uh, shy. You will want that extra um, emotion. So yeah, posture and tone, they are always important because they have to show confidence. They have to show that you are the person that most believes that idea, but you also have to have this um, extra um, careful, careful uh, decision, which is to adapt the right posture and tone to the product or service you are selling. Most people uh, don't, aren't this perfect pitcher. Uh, I'm not the perfect pitcher. Uh, Steve Jobs is it's probably the perfect pitcher, but he's the perfect pitcher because he's Steve Jobs and he has like Apple uh, to confirm that. So it's not about Steve Jobs, it's all about this really cool product. So he probably, with, with all his knowledge and all his creativity, is able to perform without a slide deck um, behind. I am favorable to have some kind of support uh, behind. But what is, is really fundamental and important to say about this is that what we say, what the pitcher says, is not what's on the slides. The slides just go along with our presentation. The, the most important thing about the slides is, is that they don't make noise in our uh, presentation. They don't add too much information so that people are distracted reading the, um, the slides and not paying attention to what is being said by the, um, by the picture. So, some rules on the slides. They don't have to have all the information. They, it's all about simplicity. It's all about the big picture, the big idea, the big number, the vision of the, of the idea. It's not about how you, you got to the idea, how you studied the market to get to that idea. Some people uh, come, come with real, this raw 
presentations where they um, where they in, insert the business model canvas, the value proposition canvas in the slides. Forget about that. The slides, it's like this really big macro picture of your business um, idea where you have the big picture, uh, only that, a good image uh, that supports your um, idea. Imagine that you are trying to solve the electricity problem in, in uh, Africa. Um, probably the first picture will be about the village in Africa that doesn't have um, electricity. You won't be adding um, the difficulties of uh, resolving the problem, uh, all the technical difficulties. That's in the pitch, that's not in the slide deck. So the slide deck, get this picture, it's like the macro picture of your idea uh, and, you and the picture should uh, talk always with, uh, with the people, with the crowd, with the jury, with um, their audience. Never look at the slides, they are just there to um, give some picture of what he's saying. I put